stood up to say goodbye like all the rest And I heard him tell the warden just before he reached my cell Let my guitar play and friend do my Let him sing me back home with a song I used to hear. Make my old memories come alive. It's time to holler down the pipe chase and rattle them bars because we're going to do a prison show for you right here at beautiful old historic old exciting new KPFT Houston from the heart of Montrose where we all hope tomorrow will be a better day. Well, welcome to the prison show. Tanika, how's your week been? Oh, I've had an awesome week. It's been chock full of snow and sleet. Yeah. (laughs) But we got lots of work done, worked hard to get people home. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy about that in spite of the downtime. And if you hadn't noticed, Hank's not here. He's out on furlough again. I don't know how he gets so many furloughs. Every time I come up for furlough, I get denied. How about you, Jack? I've never heard of one. Never heard of one, huh? You even got your mic on? You saw the paper one time? You know, really, though, back whenever we did have uh, furloughs, they brought me up for furlough so many times, I begged them not to bring me up for another one because they they always turned me down. We know, back in the 80s when it first started that, I did go on one then, you know, but then I... They changed the whole classification procedure, and that was kind of stopped everything. Yeah, now they go, now they only got the emergency furloughs, yeah. like mm-hmm. somebody passed away or something. But uh, it's because everybody screwed it up. But we have a really good show tonight. Uh, I was on a on our advertisement. I said Kathy Marston's excited. Uh, Kathy Marston from Free Better Texas Women. She comes on every six weeks, and uh, she was a bad. Kathy's woman. on one. She was a battered woman who went to prison and ended up doing like nine years out of ten. And uh, she's got a really good story, and she's out advocating for all the other women. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, I, I was surprised at how many women are down in TDCJ, and uh, they're battered women, but yet they got accused of whatever it was and got incarcerated. And they were fighting to save their lives. Oftentimes, yep. it, it, you know, they have valid self-defense claims. But if you delay, if you blink your eyes, you know, they'll claim that it's premeditation. If you've got an overly zealous prosecutor... You're going down or or too often if you're not able to afford adequate counsel. You know, that's the biggest flaw with our criminal justice system. Well, if that, you can't pay, then you're stuck. Yeah, a lot of the reactions to it first is to get away from it and they, they don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. And then when they try to get back into it, it's really messing up them. Well, mm-hmm. that's what Kathy was doing, was trying to get away from it. Whenever she went to go get her stuff out of her house, yeah. mm-hmm. then they get her for burglary of a habitation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Her oh, so house. her case was yeah. burglary of a habitation. Yeah. So uh, yeah. then we got Michael Allen in the house, whoop, mm-hmm. whoop, in mass incarceration, Houston. Uh, and, of course, we have parole solutions. And uh, I would reached out, and uh, Tony, ha- Tony ha- Professor Haughton, from uh, Earl Carl Institute is, is part of Parole Solutions. That's where we come up with that at. And uh, he's sick. So he okay. was going to come into the studio, but he's not feeling so well. Okay. Well, we wish him well. And then uh, Dave Atwood, he's still up in Colorado. He's Rocky Mountain High. And uh, I guess they're having technical difficulties again this week. Uh, so whenever y'all call in, we'll have to figure it out. I'll call Bobby here in a few minutes. I'll go out there and call Bobby and see what's going on. Okay. And then, uh, last but not least, you know, you know, Daniel, I gave you a few extra time, so I hope you got a little bit of stuff. Yeah, sure. We, of course, we always have <laughs> a lot of stuff about immigration. Always yeah. a lot of stuff about immigration. <laughs> yeah, what what got us really cranked up on the on the Spanish speaking uh, Span uh, the host here is I really got saddened whenever I found out that they had whole families that were being incarcerated. Familias um, enteras, eso es. Familias yeah. enteras encarceladas. Y nosotros contamos sus historias. Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, that just broke my heart to find out you got kids. In detention In detention. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and then we got some good news for Carrie. Uh, Carrie Bowman on the Polunsky unit. Um, we got a special break song for you. So you make sure that you stay tuned. And uh, I think we're going to have a really good show. Awesome. In the meantime, let's see what Kathy's doing. Where is she? Kathy's right here on line one. 
Hey, Kathy, how are you? Hey, Happy New Year, y'all. How are you doing tonight? Happy New Year. We're fantastic. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, I really like the new um, song for the show, and um, I really like the new format, so good job on all that. How are y'all surviving this winter weather this week? Loving it, as long as you stay in and (laughs) keep the heat on at least 80. (laughs) Just just don't go outside. (laughs) That's it. That's it. That's right. I um I had to do some of that myself. Well, I sure appreciate y'all um, giving word up front to uh, uh, the incarcerated battered women. So for those of you who are listening who are not familiar with me, I have I formed a group called Free Battered Texas Women, um, and I educate and organize um, uh, the public and uh, incarcerated battered women about the the need to stop arrests of battered women in the state because we have a high arrest rate and the need to grant clemency to battered women. In the 1990s, the Texas Council on Family Violence recommended 156 um, women and one man for um, clemency, and none of them got out under that particular provision of Senate Concurrent Resolution 26, although some have gotten out <clears throat> on parole otherwise. I, um, I have spoken again recently. I spoke to her last month to... Uh, Geraldine Swaim's daughter. Geraldine is one of those women who is recommended for clemency. Um, her husband was beating her, and in one of those instances, he actually raped her against a sink with a gun to her head and um, told her it'll be easy to clean up. And her son and a friend of his killed um, killed the husband, and she was at work, and they dragged her in on the charge under law parties. So. Right. Um, uh, she is uh, under review right now, and her, her daughter called me, had called me and let me know that in December, but then she called me again in the last couple of weeks to let me know that Geraldine's case is not being held by the, heard by the Gatesville Parole Board, um, despite the fact Geraldine, I believe, is at Mountain View, being held, heard by the Austin Parole Board. So G- Geraldine's uh, uh, number is 423-556, um, and that's Geraldine, G-E-R-A-L-D-I-N-E, and then Swaim, S-W-A-I-M, for anyone who's interested in writing a letter for her. I am sorry I did not get the, the address for the Austin Parole Board, but um, I uh, surely it's time to bring Geraldine home. She's been in there since the 80s, um, and uh, her case was vetted by the pro bono attorneys that uh, Texas Council on Family Violence had back in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, I've also heard this week, I spoke just yesterday, uh, to uh, Sherry Nance's daughter-in-law. And, y'all, Sherry Nance is now at the Carroll Young Medical Facility in Dickinson. Uh, She has gotten that hardship transfer there. And uh, now she's closer, as close as she can get, and still be in TDC uh, to her daughter, Cheryl Chenev, who's still undergoing chemo and radiation. Uh, for cancer that seems to be mostly gone, although uh, Mary, uh, Sherry's daughter-in-law, told me that Cheryl still got like a little spot on her lung and a spot on her brain. They're not sure what's going on. I also wanted to let you all know that Sherry's biopsy came up negative, so that's a good thing. Um, she uh, is, it is not cancer. Uh, it's, they're probably just ovarian cysts. And then going with the theme of some of the recent news here, uh, we had a story uh, in the the San Antonio Express News about um, the, the headline was Texas prisons dispute claims of units being underheated uh, from January 4th. And uh, uh, every winter I, I had to get my pen ready to write the grievances and write my family about the heat either being shut off, uh, not turned on, or the blowers blowing cold air in from the outside. So uh, Mary was telling me, for example, that uh, Sherry, all the other buildings that Sherry has to go through, like visitation and stuff there at Carol Young, seem to be well heated except for Sherry's dorm itself. So um, those were the updates there about Sherry. She, of course, immediately has gone to helping another inmate there who's a veteran, try to get her um, veteran's benefits uh, reinstated. So um, some of the, the big news I have for you is uh, last week on January 9th, um, uh, Free Better Texas Women was the sponsor for a big event that was part of San Antonio's two-week Dream Week um, 2018 festivities. Uh, we had an event called Stopping Texas's Sin by Silence on Incarcerating Battered Women. We screened, we did a free screening of the documentary Sin by Silence 
at the Alamo Draft House Park North in San Antonio. And that's the documentary, y'all, about the incarcerated battered women in California, the group that they've had convicted women against abuse, um, and their um, success in getting legislation that has been freeing them. Um, so we were delighted. We had about, uh, at one point I counted 42 people, which included the four of us who were panelists, so that was about 38 in the crowd at, at its peak. And the other panelists were uh, uh, Professor Doshi Piper of the Criminal Justice Department at the University of the Incarnate Word, uh, Professor Bill Bush of the History Department at Texas A&M San Antonio. Uh, uh, Doshi has been involved with um, uh, interventions in chemical dependency and uh, gender-specific interventions in the criminal justice system. And uh, Bill, he um, co-authored a study on the Texas Youth Commission with the Texas Criminal Justice Coalition a while back. Um, our other panelist was Patricia Castillo, who is the director of the Peace Initiative, which is a consortium of um, groups that are educating and preventing battering here in San Antonio. We, we really had a fabulous panel. We got great questions from the crowds. We had um, the director of the Bear County Justice Center attending. Moms Demand Action was there. Um, Mary Jo Garcia Biggs, who uh, is a social work professor at Texas State University, showed up. We had a we had a pretty good crowd there. Um, so uh, we're we're trying to figure out what our next event will be. Um, it was it was a pretty big deal, and um, uh, a good time was had by all. And and then I was pretty exhausted for the rest of the week. So um, those are those are some of the updates that I I have uh, for y'all today. Uh, as we're uh, clearing uh, uh, that event, and, uh, and as some of you may know that San Antonio has the largest Martin Luther King Jr. Day march um, in the United States, and I, I had the privilege of getting to go with a friend of mine on Monday and march it for the first time. Y'all, we watched it for an hour, and then we finally stepped in, and, and then we marched for 50 minutes. It, it was just humongous. There are thousands and thousands of people there. It's amazing. But um, I, I, I guess I probably ought to give my information here for anybody who wants to contact me or um, uh, 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 contact Free Battered Texas Women. Uh, you, can, you can write out Free Battered Texas Women or FBTW. And, and the P.O. Box is P.O. Box 47, and that's in Shirts, S-C-H-E-R-T-Z, Texas, 78154. That's P.O. Box 47 in Shirts, S-C-H-E-R-T-Z, Texas, 78154. Say, Kathy, you remember whenever we were down and on the front of the I-60, it always had the parole board's address? Well, here, here's the thing. This is my recommendation to yeah, well, the, you. All you got to do is check the box is what I'm saying. It says 8610 Show Creek Boulevard yes. right on the front of the I-60. Yes, but you can cut to the chase and fax your letters in. Uh -huh. If you want to add letters or anything in, uh, to, to um, uh, Geraldine's parole packet, fax it. Cut to the chase and go ahead and fax directly to that voting board member's office at 512-406-5858. Quick question for you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Kathy, is it that, I mean, so Geraldine's case, hers was a murder case, correct? So that would have been a, and, and because of the length of her sentence, that's a um, Senate Bill 45 case, correct? I believe so. She's got a capital murder charge. Okay. And, and that's so, why they got to go to Austin. Yeah, that's yeah. why it has to go to yeah, Austin. That, they're It'll in fact full go panel. Up to all of the boards so it's just going to start with austin go ahead and fax listeners if you want to fax letters of support um on behalf of inmate geraldine swain uh and, and again confirm this tdc number 423-556 fax it directly to the parole board office at 512-406-5858 and all you guys and gals that are on the inside if you want to support and write letters then you go ahead and send it to that 8610 Shoal Creek Boulevard. Okay. Yep. Thank you all so much. I was remembering I was remembering off the top of my head, and I meant to, to be organized enough to yep. have that down. Thank you all so now, much. I'll no never worries. forget the front of that I-60. <laughs> <laughs> I want to forget the front of the I-60. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks, Kathy. Thank thanks you all so, so much. much. Take all right. care, and thanks all, as always for having us on. Have a good night. You too. Yep. All right. Bye-bye. Well, where's Michael Allen at? Somebody better get old Michael Allen up in here. 
I know he's just up in the next room. Daniel, you want to give him a microphone? Of course. Yep. No, Mike, you're supposed to be up in there where Daniel's at. you got to grab Daniel by the ear every now and then. <laughs> he's in the background dancing all yeah, the time. That's what it we, is. We missed him dancing tonight. Yep. He, it wasn't the same song. He liked that funk it up. Oh, we, had, we got him live last week. <laughs> yep, we sure did. That was pretty cool. Okay, make sure you get that camera on me now. All right, we got it. You're live. Awesome. Uh, hey, y'all. Uh, I, I, I don't have much tonight, David. Uh, I I had called a, a friend of mine. He hasn't called in. Can you speak in the mic, please? Yes, I can speak into the mic. Uh, I called a friend of mine, Steve Huerta. Uh, I, I just want to talk about, you know, I, there's there's a lot going on. Um, I just read an article about, uh, uh, I guess they're, they're decreasing the number of people in prisons in the United States. Well, actually, the numbers kind of stay in static, but they're decreasing the number of uh, men prisoners, and they're increasing the number of uh, female prisoners. It's interesting. In about 10 states, it's that's happening right now. And um, I also read something about um, in California, if you have money, you can get special privileges, like semi-private rooms, phone whenever you want it, uh, all kinds of uh, goodies. You know, if you can pay, I think they charge about a hundred dollars a night. So you know, the the prisons are the prisons are the prisons. You know, uh, they they need to keep their numbers up because uh, t places like TCI and CCI and all these different states. There's about forty of them now that that use. Uh, prison labor to make uh, their products cheaper and sell them at full price. So, you know, I don't know how that's going to change. And that's why I, I was I was wanting, uh, uh, it looks like Steve's on the line. I was wanting to talk about uh, this organization that uh, I, I'm associated with that Steve's a, a, a member of, uh, All of Us or None. Uh, Steve's um, Steve's been in there ever since I've known him. These are the uh, band the box people, but they do a lot. Um, I I got a chance last year to go to California, to a conference and meet the uh, the founder of it, Dorsey Nunn. But uh, in California, they're big. Uh, they're real involved in public policy um, um, in, in in Sacramento, the state, and they they try to stop the the construction of new prisons. They channel funds to the community based on you know, to community-based solutions to public safety issues, improve conditions of confinement, reduce numbers of people being held in prisons and jails. Uh, they they work on ending discrimination against formerly incarcerated people and those with conviction histories, and, and they create opportunities for uh, formerly incarcerated people to succeed in their communities. And I'd just like to read you something from their website, what they talk about uh, in, under legislative review. It says, every legislative cycle, um, all of us are none, and they, they, their staff, interns, and members track hundreds of bills through the California legislature. They, uh, they support bills that advance um, the mission of releasing incarcerated people, restoring human and civil rights, and reunifying families by writing advocacy letters, testifying in hearings, and directly lobbying legislators. They oppose bills that increase the severity and length of sentence or create more barriers to employment, housing, education, or voting much of the same way. So they're, they're big in California, and they're not, actually they're non, non-existent in Houston. And Steve Huerta, uh, my friend in San Antonio, he, him and uh, 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 Tommy Acosta, both of them are in all of us or none. They're, they're doing something. They're creating a... Uh, a voter block over there. You know, Ray did that in Houston uh, with the, uh, the the gay community. You know, to where, and he was instrumental in getting the first gay mayor elected a few years ago. But making these voting blocks works. And Steve Huerta has done a lot of uh, good work in San Antonio, and, and uh, looks like uh, he's on the line. So I'm just going to uh, let him chime in. Are you there, Steve? He's on one. Yep. Gotcha. You there, Steve? Hi, Steve. Yes, I'm here. Yeah, Steve, I, I don't know if you're listening, but uh, I was telling him you're doing a lot of good work with the uh, uh, creating a voter a voter block over there. Uh, if you want, uh, why don't you tell us uh, what, what you guys are involved in over there? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, here in San Antonio, 
We have been working real hard, I would say, for at least the past seven years in building a, a what I'd like to coin as a justice-impacted voting block. Uh, so we have a voter database of 98,000 formerly incarcerated and justice-impacted voters. Uh, many of them have built his, voting history, so they're able to, 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 to be on active voting uh, and walk list. Uh, I guess the gist of it, Mike, is, is really about uh, the political power and the political strength and the political reach of people who have in, uh, been impacted by the justice system. We have the numbers. We have always had the ability to change laws. We have always had the ability to free our brothers and sisters from the system. We have the ability to open a lot of those cage doors, but we've just never expressed, used, or exercised that political power. So we're organizing so that we can build something that we can duplicate in Houston, uh, in Dallas, and throughout the country so that we can become a national power block, but from the grassroots level on up. Hey, Steve, it's David Collingsworth. Are you referring to Second Chance Democrats, or are you calling it no. something different now? No, I mean, uh, I'm, Dave, you know, I am the founder of the Second Chance Democrats here in uh, Texas, and uh, the Second Chance Democrats works on issues like that. They do. Uh, however, uh, all of us, none as an organization, it's a nonpartisan, we work on focus on voter education and, and uh, tracking voter data. Uh, uh, I, I think, you know, uh, a, a collateral benefit is a lot of the people that uh, are in all of us and on that have been trained in uh, uh, political campaigning uh, use those skills when they work with Second Chance Democrats or other groups too. So, you know, you, you, you have that skill set that you're, you're able to take wherever you go and, and, and it comes in very handy on both sides of that, of that table. And, you know, this this movement, these movements excite me. For 10 years before law school, I was a political consultant, and I spent time and money that I didn't have trying to motivate people who had been disenfranchised, who were being trampled over, trying to educate them, you know, do whatever it takes to get officials into office who think the way you do well, and it's too it. often Steve's doing it's it. too often that we we you know we don't get it until our rights have been taken away you know so it's when we are on lockdown when people have been incarcerated that they realize oh wow i do have a voice i am still a human being a citizen i have the right to speak up so it's once you learn how to file those i-60s and all those grievances and all of that and so yes the minute you exit those doors we need to do all that we can to give folks an opportunity to be re-enfranchised so i'm absolutely behind any movements to re-educate people and and mobilize those grassroots individuals who have been disenfranchised um, and, and it's unfortunate that oftentimes that, you know, you have to have your rights taken away. How many candidates are we talking about now? Steve. Well, uh, I'm glad you said that. The, the, what we're doing right now uh, allows us to work in a coordinated campaign effort. So we're looking at well over 52 different races that justice-impacted voters can impact at various different levels. And for uh, Texas Court of Appeals, uh, uh, Fourth Court of Appeals, I believe it is, uh, that we can impact because they reach into the Bear County area and Bear County uh, is, is where the bulk of these elections uh, uh, voter turnouts are gonna occur. This includes Congressional District 23. The formerly incarcerated people actually have a voting block uh, uh, that I'm quite confident that if I uh, do mapping and, and research in any other city, I'll find the same thing uh, in the congressional district. So we're able to impact elections various different ways. What we're doing is creating models and different type of algorithms that allow us to employ them in different campaign scenarios because we're building the culture of voting before we're actually focusing on where we want to gather people as a one unit vote uh, block uh, because that was what, was what made sense at first because people didn't have the culture of voting. Mm -hmm. So if they get used to voting, it makes it easier for, for movements to begin to 
uh, target those messages along the ethno-racial uh, lines in the different uh, geographic and demographic areas that you M- M- might be employing some type Steve. of campaign tactic with justice impacted voters. Steve, let me ask you something real quick. We only got yeah. a couple minutes, but um, are are you involved with the uh, state Democratic Party, and, and, and in what way are you involved with them? Yes, I am. I am going on my second term uh, as the Texas Senate District Twenty Six Committee Man for the State Democratic Party, and so I, I've uh, been, you know, pretty much uh, focused in in organizing over two hundred precincts that are under my jurisdiction. And close to, I believe, uh, three to five hundred thousand constituents, and so I work closely with uh, wow. Senator Menendez, uh, uh, Dino Ravelo, our state rep for one sixteen. Uh, you have uh, Tomas Sireste, uh, Ina Minhares, all these different state reps that we work with to help pursue policy, and, and they were instrumental in helping us pursue the federal policy with the ban the box uh, by sending letters of support to the White House on our behalf. That's great. You know, you and I have talked about uh, getting something like that started over here in Houston and and the difficulty, you know, I'm having, you know, uh, 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 bringing people in. But I'm hoping some of you guys listening in there inside and some of you in, in the Houston listening audience might take an interest in this because... This voting block stuff works, you know, and we're going to, if we're going to change this, we're not going to get, do it by standing on a street corner and waving signs. We're going to do it by going into the, uh, the state houses and changing laws. And, and Steve and, 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 and Tommy over there in San Antonio, they've got a plan and they're, they're actually putting it into, into the process in, into motion. So write me here, write Mike at KPFT, um, uh, 419 Lovett Boulevard. And, and, and talk to me about this. I'll put you in touch with Steve. And, and Steve, I, I'm sorry, our time's running out. You know, maybe you can talk to David. Maybe you can have you on, uh, 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 give you a block sometime because you're doing really great work there in San Antonio, Steve. Yeah, Steve's Thank you. been on a few times. Thank you for having me, guys. Awesome. Appreciate Thanks Good so work. much, Steve. We appreciate you. Okay. Bye. See ya. All right. Well, thank you, Mike. We appreciate You're welcome. you. The rest of that address here is you can reach Michael Allen at care of KPFT, The Prison Show, 419 Lovett Boulevard, L O V E T T, Houston, Texas, 77006. All right, Mike, you be careful. We love you, brother. And now we've got the Parole Solutions. You have parole questions and we have parole solutions. This is Manny Nazami from Houghton, DeBose and Nazami PLLC, Parole Solutions Law Group, answering your parole questions. Today's question asks, what happens if I violate the terms of my release? For minor administrative rule violations, the parole division may, at its discretion, decide to hold a conference with the offender to impose low-level sanctions such as writing a letter of reprimand. However, any offender who is alleged to have committed a new offense, absconded from supervision, or violated any rules, terms, or conditions may have a warrant issued for his or her arrest. These warrants are called blue warrants and will be executed by law enforcement authorities. An offender is entitled to a preliminary... Here we go. All right. hearing if the offender is alleged to have committed a new offense, is accused of a new offense, and is later no-billed or the charges are dismissed, has a new conviction for a traffic offense where punishment is punishable only by fine, allegedly engaged in a criminal behavior but has no formal charges pending, is arrested on a new criminal charge, does not sign any portion of the rights of the offender in the revocation process form, or is mentally incapable of understanding his rights. The purpose of a preliminary hearing is to determine whether probable cause or reasonable grounds exist to believe that the offender has committed an act that would constitute a violation of the conditions of release. During the preliminary hearing, the hearing officer will determine whether enough evidence exists to proceed to a revocation hearing. An offender is entitled to a revocation hearing if they are alleged to have committed a technical violation only, following a trial or a plea of guilty or no contest 
for a felony or misdemeanor, or the offender is mentally incapable of understanding the revocation process. At the revocation hearing, testimony is heard and the hearing officer will determine whether enough evidence exists to recommend a revocation. Even if the offender has received a new felony conviction, a revocation hearing will be conducted to consider mitigating circumstances unless the offender waives his or her rights to the hearing. If the evidence shows a violation, the hearing officer may recommend that the parole panel revoke the offender's parole or mandatory supervision. If supervision is not revoked, the parole panel may allow the offender to continue supervision under the same or modified conditions, or they may order a transfer to an intermediate sanctioned facility. Everyone here at Houghton, DeBose, and Nizami wishes to thank you for listening, and please remember to keep sending your questions to 3013 Fountain View Drive, Suite Number 120, Houston, Texas 77057, or you can call us at 832-925-7914, or you can email us at Parole Solutions Law Group at gmail.com, or you can find us on the web at Parole Solutions Law Group.com. The statements made during the segment are for informational purposes only and not for the purpose of providing specific legal advice. Because each case is unique, you should contact an attorney to obtain advice with respect to any particular issue or problem. Use of the information provided in this segment does not create an attorney-client relationship between Houghton, DeVos, and Nizami and the listener. All right. And we were talking a little bit um, about the Parole Solutions segment. Um, what that is is that gives you guys a chance to, to write your, your questions in, and they take a number of letters that they've gotten. And so if you wrote a letter and your topic hadn't been touched yet, then get three or four of your other folks that are around you to write the same question, and then they'll talk about it. Mm -hmm. But those folks came to us through the Earl Carl Institute <laughs> Innocence Project. The Houghton there, that's Professor Houghton. Mm -hmm. So, and, uh, and and he's sick right now. So he that's he was going to come in tonight, but he was he didn't feel so well. So we just went ahead and played the that's what I hear. audio again. Okay. So y'all keep him in your thoughts, and I think uh, we've got Dave on line three. Hey Dave, how you doing? How's it going? Okay, okay. How's everybody there? Well, we're warming up. It's 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 in the fifties and the sixties now. The winter is over. <laughs> yep. Well, um, we got down to about zero here in Colorado a little while ago, so you weren't quite that cold, I don't think, were you? No, <laughs> no, I'm riding Norma Jean tonight. <laughs> zero Celsius. <laughs> Lordy. Well, David, I, I saw that picture of you uh, uh, riding on your motorcycle and uh, with your hair blown. And, yeah. um, I thought, you know, if you were out there in that 30-degree 30, 30 weather or whatever, you'd have a little bit of... No, and frost on your... It was 39 your, degrees that day. Was it? Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah, it felt pretty nice, though. And you were moving too fast for the snow to settle on <laughs> yeah, it you. Yeah, so. it wouldn't yeah. touch me, yeah. yeah. Didn't have time to catch <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. Golly. Well, um, I'll give you a little report on the death penalty here. Um, uh, I follow things pretty closely at all times. Uh, Chris, I know we had an execution the other night that's... Another one for the Texas record, up to 546 now. We started in the uh, 1982, and we got some more schedules. Uh, I want to say hello to everybody on death row that's listening in and tell them that I, I did get a number of letters and cards recently, and I'll be answering them, and thank you for those updates that I get through the mail. Um, what I want to talk to Oh, tonight a little bit is the some of the stuff I've been reading in the newspapers and um, the other news outlets uh, about Texas being a leader on criminal justice reform. I read one just recently where the person that wrote the article actually said that Texas was a national leader in criminal justice reform. And I don't know, when I, because I work on the death penalty so much, I thought, well, you know, that's a little bit of a stretch, I think. Um, I'm very happy, as other people are, about 
whatever we do in Texas to improve the system to make it less discriminatory and fair to all people. Um, but but there is an elephant in the room in Texas, and that is the death penalty. And it doesn't really matter what people say about Texas being a leader in the reform of the criminal justice system as long as we have the death penalty on the books and we are the leader in executing people. Believe me, those words, uh, maybe there are people, maybe there are some politicians in Texas believe that, but when you get outside of Texas in other places in the country and when you get to other places in the world, it really doesn't matter what the politicians say about us being a leader. All they know is that we have the death penalty. We are the leader um, in, the, uh, in the country, the United States, with 546 executions since uh, 1982. Uh, we had one we were here last year. The good news is the number has gone down over time, and that's, that's wonderful. But we're still the leader, and so I have to caution those those politicians and policymakers when they start saying that somehow that we're a leader in criminal justice reform. Although we're happy for whatever improvements do take place, until we have the death penalty abolished in the state of Texas, our credibility is is not there. That's all I can say about that. And the other thing I've heard at times. I'll hear politicians saying that Texas is a leader in being smart on crime. And I've heard uh, even uh, one of our state senators saying that and taking credit for that. But that same, same state senator won't touch the death penalty, won't go near it. And so, um, again, when it comes to credibility, uh, we... Yeah, yeah, they won't, you know, until we get rid of the death penalty, these improvements, which we all welcome, uh, are just not going to have that much credibility because we have to get rid of the death penalty. That's the elephant in the room when it comes to the state of Texas. Now, the other thing, when it comes to this concept of being smart on crime, that I want to mention is that, um, you know, uh, these improvements, like I said, that have been made are welcome. And, we're, and I've worked on them myself even. Although the death penalty is the number one issue I've worked on, I've worked on these other issues too. And but to be smart on crime, if we really think about it, if we really want to get into it, be smart on crime. We've got to really get at the root causes of crime, and that's something that really everybody wants. Uh, everybody wants to reduce crime, and so we have to. When it comes to Texas, or really any place in the country we have to look at what are our mental health programs mm -hmm. and are we really addressing mental health in a strong, aggressive way in this country? And the reality is we're not. Uh, I think Texas is just about among the state, the states about the bottom of the list when it comes to working on mental health, mental illness problems. And the other thing, that's number one, reducing crime. Another one is what happens to children. Uh, child abuse and neglect is a major contributor to crime. Uh, if a child does not grow up in a nurturing, loving home, if they're neglected, abused, and I tell you, I, I've, I've talked to many people on death row who their childhoods were horrific, horrific, and... The way I think about that is if they did not have a good childhood, something's going to happen later on, usually in their life. And and I'm not talking about just not a little bit of an imperfect childhood because most of our childhoods have not been perfect. But some, cho some people, some children from the time they're infants are horribly abused and neglected. And it's no wonder that there's criminal behavior that comes out later on. And so... If we really want, in the state of Texas, and I hope there are some politicians listening to this, they really want to reduce crime, they really want to reduce crime, they better get to mental health services, they better get 
with the problems of child abuse and neglect. Because until we strongly address those two issues, we're always going to have problems. And we're always, and so the death penalty is not an answer to these problems. The death penalty is not an answer, it never will be. And mass incarceration that we're dealing with also will never be an answer. Throwing people in prison, locking them up, thinking that something, you know, maybe some good things happen to some people, but we've got to get at the root causes of crime before we really address the problem. And so that's basically my message tonight. Well, that's a great message, and we thank you for that, David. Um, can I ask you, would we, would we not also want to add um, drug and alcohol abuse um, yeah. to that list of problems? Um, absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. But you see, that that goes into the whole mental on, health. Uh, yeah, mental health. Right. And why do Why do people later on, you know, it's mental health, but but a lot of people get into drug and alcohol abuse later on in their lives because of what's happened to them as children. Self medicating. So <laughs> yeah. Self medicating. Yeah. 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 And so, I I just wish that we could have a uh, some um, something going on in the state of Texas that would address those. Two issues, two issues, strongly. I mean, we don't. I don't think we do. If something's going on, I'd love to hear about it. Well, I will tell you. In um, you know, just in the whole criminal defense world, and we we have miles and miles to go. But in our larger counties, um, where we have more um, open-minded thinking prosecutors. They are putting programs into place where they're diversion-type programs. Um, so right. in lieu of direct incarceration, you're you're putting people into divert programs or uh, deferred programs where you, you are treating for drug issues. You have mental health courts, but at the same time, that's not the starting point. Most often, it doesn't matter. The uniform mantra of any prosecutor, you know, uh, no matter how minor or heinous the crime is, we want 10 years TDC. We want 25 years TDC. Never mind the person has a long history of bipolar disorder, a, a, a you know, treatment from childhood uh, of right. being diagnosed with bipolar or they're schizoaffected or, you know, suffered from PTSD, from childhood sexual abuse, etc. And even where there's documented, you know, prosecutors are too often. We want them incarcerated for 25 years. But more often now than before, we do have more programs in place. And what has to happen is you've got to start educating not just the public, not just um, our elected officials who are in charge of implementing those programs, our judges, but um, defense attorneys. Many times people get raw deals because they've got ignorant lawyers representing them who don't know about these other these diversion programs, these divert programs that are in fact available, and DAs don't advertise it. Mm -hmm. But even your defense attorneys, though, they come up to you whenever they're trying to get you to plea bargain, and they tell you how much time you're going to do, and then you end up doing most of your time. You don't get away with what they're trying to tell you. It's just a sales. They might as well be used car salesmen anymore. Yeah, that, that, that's the truth. Unfortunately, <laughs> well, snake Dave, oil salesmen. You know, <laughs> yeah. Well, we appreciate you. you. Know, the, the diversion programs are great, and I support those 100. percent But we've got to start earlier. Right. Yeah. That's right. the thing. We have to start earlier. Right. You know, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but time flies when you're having fun. Thank you. Yeah, I know. You say that to me every time, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so when you coming back to Houston, man? You gonna wait till spring? No, I'm going next week. Next week? Next week is yeah, already right. spring in Houston. The next week's already spring in Houston. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I waited until the cold weather passed. Yeah. <laughs> now we generally skip spring and go straight to summer. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Yeah. All right, Dave. Well, we appreciate you, man. We'll see you next week. All righty. You take care. All bye, right. bye, bye, bye. Muy bien, es tiempo por la español. El tiempo del español. Muy buenas noches a todos los que entienden español, a todos los que son españoles, hispanos, latinos. Muy buenas noches a todos. Este ha sido un año en el que el tema de las cárceles y el tema de la inmigración se han sobrepuesto muy a menudo con esta nueva administración que tiene Estados Unidos. Os voy a hablar de las mm, historias más destacadas de 2017 relacionadas a inmigración. Con la primera seguramente es la de las órdenes ejecutivas de inmigración del presidente Trump. 
En su primera semana, como recordaréis, la primera semana de presidencia, el presidente emitió tres órdenes ejecutivas sobre inmigración. Las primeras dos instruyeron a las autoridades de inmigración a implementar cambios radicales en la forma en que actuaban a lo largo de la frontera y también en el interior del país. Directivas para crear más centros de detención cerca de la frontera. Contratar a miles de agentes adicionales de la patrulla fronteriza y retener fondos federales de las llamadas ciudades santuarios, que se negaban a cumplir con las leyes federales de inmigración. Lo habéis oído, hemos hablado varias veces de este tema, de Sanctuary Cities, y la construcción inmediata de un muro a lo largo de la frontera entre Estados Unidos y México. La orden ejecutiva más polémica fue la primera versión de la prohibición de entrar al país a ciudadanos de países musulmanes. La orden suspendió la entrada de inmigrantes de siete países, de mayoría musulmana, durante 90 días y detuvo todas las admisiones de refugiados durante 120 días. No se aceptaban refugiados sirios por tiempo indefinido, además. Sin embargo, los tribunales bloquearon esta orden ejecutiva en cuestión de días, después de varias protestas que invadieron aeropuertos en todo el país, como recordaréis, a principios del año pasado. En marzo, el presidente emitió una segunda prohibición de viaje, que fue bloqueada por los tribunales hasta junio, cuando la Corte Suprema permitió que una parte de la prohibición entrara en vigor. En septiembre, el presidente Trump emitió una tercera prohibición de viajar, después de que la mayoría del Travel Ban 3 fue detenida nuevamente por los tribunales, en diciembre el Tribunal Supremo permitió que toda la prohibición entrara en vigencia mientras se sigue argumentando su legalidad en los tribunales inferiores. Esa era una de las noticias más destacadas que seguramente ha impactado a alguno de los que están escuchando en este momento, pero seguramente todavía más ha impactado la terminación de DACA, la iniciativa de acción diferida para los arribos en la infancia. El presidente Trump terminó la iniciativa de acción diferida para la llegada de niños de la, de la era Obama en septiembre, a pesar de prometerle a los 800.000 beneficiarios de la iniciativa eh, Gran Corazón. La administración anunció su finalización después de ser amenazada por varios abogados estatales quienes querían que terminase. La administración permitió que cualquier persona cuya DACA terminara el 5 de marzo del 2018 solicitara una renovación final, lo que provocó un pánico generalizado entre los jóvenes inmigrantes, muchos de los cuales se apresuraron a presentar una solicitud de renovación larga y costosa dentro del plazo de un mes dado por el gobierno. Esta ansiedad se vio agravada por el hecho de que varios retrasos del, del USPS, el Servicio Postal de Estados Unidos, provocó que muchas solicitudes llegaran a USCIS después de la fecha límite. A medida eh, que más y más personas caían fuera del Estado, cada día la administración le asignaba la responsabilidad al Congreso para proporcionar una solución legislativa permanente para DACA. Y como sabéis, se está discutiendo todavía de esto en estos momentos. Tercera historia destacada sobre la inmigración, el pasaje pendiente del DREAM Act. Después de que DACA terminó, el Congreso fue presionado para encontrar una solución permanente para sus antiguos destinatarios. El Dream Act volvió a subir para ser considerado en el Congreso a fines de año, lo que habría creado un camino hacia la ciudadanía para hasta dos millones de jóvenes inmigrantes, incluidos los 800.000 antiguos beneficiarios de DACA. Sin embargo, como bien sabéis, las últimas noticias nos dicen que el Congreso no lo incluyó en esta que se llama, digamos, resolución continua necesaria que se necesitaba para mantener al gobierno financiándolo. Eso significa que... Habrá que ver cuál será la próxima oportunidad para el Dream Lack eh, y vamos a ver qué es lo que pasa en estos días. So, these were the very first three um, stories related to immigration, immigration, and uh, then we know that it overlaps uh, many times with prison. So, these were main news uh, that they involve many of our listeners related to the Latino and Hispanic community.
But I was going to ask you if you just had, if you could take 30 seconds just to give us a quick recap on DACA in English, um, the status of things, you know, they're, they're, we're still up in arms, but we're all affected, well, yes. Yes, we're all affected and we're following very closely the news now uh, because it's like a very fluid moment. I'm, I'm going to retain myself in here to give the news on DACA next week because That's things right. are happening right now. Yes. Tonight, right. yes, that so we don't know. Just it's a yet. very fluid situation, and uh, we want to be sure about the news that we give. So we'll save you some extra time next week, so please. you can talk about it. We are going to need it, and we are okay. going to need uh, many of our uh, volunteers in, uh, uh, in grassroots leadership and many other associations that they. Carry so, do you have some friends over at grassroots leadership you'd like to come on and maybe do a segment next week? We definitely need. I'll try to and get I've in touch. Do uh, a bilingual thing so that we all can understand it. Yes, and if yes. they don't come in here, we. We can do it remotely. Okay. Awesome. That sounds great. Awesome. You know awesome. the phone number. Awesome. Of course. The phone number, 713-526-5738-5713-526-KPFT. All right. So now it's time for the break song if Mike's ready to go. Honey bands, I can't get enough I'm a man, put your fingers up Take it to the bands, honey bands, I can't get enough I'm a man, I'm a man, put your fingers up Did this come from Rusk? Is this recorded in Rusk? I just been running like booby Cold like I'm straight out of koozie Never say die like a goonie If you're good, then I'm bad, then I'm bougie Got a grip, you holding it loosely If a damn if you told me the truth, see Got a bam and she likes me, hate me Got a jam that I play when I sightsee If you're thinking you can, then go beat me But just understand that I think it's unlikely Uncle Sam and the man that can bite me And all of these people can plan for the fight me I go hard in the pain and I plan the center Straight in the picture and stick to the plan Get to the bands, call me the man I didn't call for the girl, but you can Sick, flip, 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 I'm flipping the script yeah, I'm done with you rappers, yeah I'm done with you kids, uh Don't got no love for you, period, uh I don't go hard, are you serious, yeah Party till I feel delirious, huh Get kill me and curious, yeah Heart turning colder than winter Rolling up patties and pinners Eating the juice on my dinner I'm a sinner, I'm a winner, go figure About to hop on a plane to Milan Hell no, I've been on All money ain't changing my arm I feel like a dawn Get the bands, honey, bands I get, get it, no, yeah I'm the man, I'm the man, put your fingers up Get the bands, honey bands, I can't get enough I'm the man, I'm the man, put your fingers up yeah. Look at the trouble, you found it All of my money compounded Shit, I'm feeling astounding Climb on the top of the mountain Jump off like I don't even give a damn So proud that I might never ever land Live forever for the cheddar man Live forever for the cheddar man So fuck if you look for a better man I'm stuck to the paper like Benjamin I hunted bands, hunted bands in London In London, man I travel the world like a tourist I've been when Nate is important Grab a hundred bands in 23 What is this? I am Jordan Get the bands, hundred bands I ain't get enough I'm the man, I'm the man, put your fingers up Get the bands, get the bands, I can't get enough Get the bands, on the bands, I can't get enough Copper green super lagar, doing good so it's karma Smoking OG super ganja, putting my baby in Prada So that mean the devil or Prada, that baby be hot like a sauna The titties are fat as a fauna, and we're moving on cause we gotta Get the bands, on it. Bands, I can't get it, no, yeah I'm a man, I'm a man, put your fingers up, so, yeah Get the bands, honey, bands, I can't get enough I'm the man, I'm the man, put your fingers up Six minutes till ten o'clock And that was, for everybody who was listening, that was Carrie Bowman's son, Carrie Bowman on the Polensky unit. That was his son, Cole, 
Um, and he sings under the, he raps under Luke, Luke Cole. Cole. And I'll I'll go home and ask my teenagers. I'm certain that they've heard of him. Yep. <laughs> he's got a new album coming out. The name of that song was called Get the Bands. Mm -hmm. But he's got a new album coming out on February the 14th. And it's awesome. just simply titled L.A. Okay. Okay. So from what I understand that uh, uh, his dad never has heard his music. So. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm glad we were able to give him that opportunity. So, don't you have some PSAs you're supposed to be playing? Don't we have to pay the bills? Go ahead. KPFT Houston. Community is all about connection, and KPFT is seeking local organizations, businesses, and individuals to participate in our community partner program. Community partners help KPFT by supporting station initiatives, reducing our pledge drives, and being key contributors to our success. As a community partner, your organization or business becomes invested in a richer way in KPFT and helps to keep local independent media flowing. Interested in being a community partner? Well, contact us by email at partners at kpft.org. Thanks for your interest in our Community Partners Program. This is KPFT Houston. Fair housing. It's not an option, it's the law. The Houston Galveston Area Council reminds you that the Federal Fair Housing Act makes it illegal to discriminate based on race, color, national origin, sex, disability, or family status when selling or renting housing. Complaints and concerns should be addressed to the Office of Housing and Urban Development. Call 1-800-669-9777 or visit www.hud.gov slash fairhousing. KPFT Houston. KPFT Houston. Awesome. We are back. That's that uh, PSA that Hank says, cut the music, cut the music. <laughs> <laughs> the music is an important part too, isn't it? It's very important, especially when you've got extra time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well we played the, the Christmas advertisement whenever we had a Christmas show, mm -hmm. and that was Buzzy Martin's song we played, so I felt like the music was real important. I suppose. I don't know. That's over my head. That's but over your Buzzy head. Buzzy Martin. Buzzy Martin is the Johnny Cash of today. Okay. He sings all kinds of prison music. He, okay. Well, he taught guitar lessons, and he went into prison, and uh, he's from California, so over there they carry guns, right? So he okay. was yelling, don't shoot, I'm the guitar man. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Learn so, something Yeah, every we got day. Billy on the air. All righty. Hey, Billy, what you doing? What's happening, man? Long time no hear from. Yeah, yeah I'm always I'm hiding good, in the wings. I let Hank drive. Hank's gone tonight. <laughs> Where is he? Uh, I think he went to Miami or something or another. Uh, lucky son of a gun, man. Lucky son of a gun. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is a big shout out for Big Will. Uh, sorry, I ain't been on for the last two weeks, man. Um, had a couple of technical difficulties and whatnot, but I told you about it, the JPay. Uh, hope that you're doing good. Uh, and had an awesome load of letters land, so I'm trying to work my way back through them. Um, I go on Wednesday to the cash exchange to go and change up the first load of dollars. Um, at the minute, it's to every pound, it's about a dollar thirty-three cents or something like that. So I'm not really getting much of the money. So I'm trying to hang out uh, and get above that. Um, I've got that uh, letter, what you said about Randy uh, losing the bet. Oh, so Randy owes you a, a little dance, does he? So come on, Randy, if you're listening, you better get up off the bunk start doing your, uh, your twirls and uh, shaking your ear and all that kind of stuff and having a little bit of a practice run. Because when you see Big Will, it's on. That's what he's doing. doing with the dollar so, bills, uh, right? <laughs> you best uh, get ready for some of that kind of stuff right there. Um, there you go, Will, bro. I said it, mate. I hope that he's gone as red as a tomato or a tomato, as he would say. Um, so, yeah, I'm doing good. Uh, Mum's in bed. We've had some heavy winds. Like I say, j -Pay's picking up. Uh, Apex is on its way. Uh, um, not long to go now, the 21st of February, I shall be there. And Randy, if I see you on visit, 
I want some of that sexual dance, so you best be prepared. Um, Will, I'm going to let somebody else get on now. Um, try knocking again next week. I love you like now, thousands, and I'm going to be on JPEGs, so be ready, man. Get me a root beer ready as well. All right, then, I love you like nine thousand, and I'll see you soon. And Randy, you best be prepared, you son of a gun. It's on. <laughs> it's on. Thanks, <laughs> Billy. Good see night, Billy. Good Thanks. night. Thanks. Cheers. Bye. Bye. <laughs> All right, we've got, is this is this Hank on? Uh, Hank from Wisconsin. Yeah. Hey, how y'all doing? Great. We're okay, Hank. How you doing? Oh, just tired. Been working like crazy. Been fighting. I got my gal on the other line. She said I was snoring a minute ago. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> let, let me know. I just called in to say hey to everybody. All my old buddies, let them know I was thinking about them. I got a reprieve today. I uh, thought I had to work tomorrow, but I got the day off, so I was happy about that and got off a little bit early. But working them 12-hour days, there's some long days. But at least I get a paycheck at the end of the week. So so that beats what I was getting, so I'm happy about that. Peg, you got anything you want to say? Oh, I didn't know they could hear me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, I did my job. I woke him up. Yeah, thanks, Peg. <laughs> okay, yeah. y'all take care. You too, right. thanks. Thanks for everything you do down at the station. Hey, y'all. Todd, good to, hope you're doing well. All right, y'all, we're out of here. Bye-bye. Oh, bye-bye. Later, bye-bye. Hank. Thanks. Later on. Going to Shelly. We're <laughs> All right, yeah. let's see, is it Shelly and Colleen? Hold on, looks like it I've is. got yes, two it is. of you on here. How do we do hold that? Hold on, let me... Let me let me put you You've back on a, hold a minute. A newbie driving. All right. There you go, Shelly. What'd, what'd you do? Drop that. I, I I put her back on hold, then I dropped two, and then I picked her back up. Gotcha. All right. Won't happen again. You got to be quick on the draw, Shelly. I see. Okay. Hey, Shelly. Go ahead. Hi. How are you? Good. It's your dime. Go a, ahead. I'm giving a shout out to Rodney Reed tonight. I just wanted to um, say, hey, Rodney. Um, can you believe I'm actually awake to call? Um, I wanted to let you know that A is doing really good, but he's really super busy with basketball right now. But we're still working on him to get up to see you. So um, I'll, I'll stay on that. You know I will. Um, I wanted to let you know that Macy made her way back up to Tech to finish out her final semester. Um, and we're going to be excited about seeing her graduate in May. She's getting out all of her law school applications now. So. So think about her, Rod, because um, we're hoping that she can get into a good law school. Um, hey, please know that as soon as I get my income tax, um, you know, I'm going to be getting a better car. My car is just running really bad right now, but then I'll get up to see you. Um, with the government shutting down tonight, I don't know. Um, I don't know how long that's going to be um, or if our income tax will be delayed, but I'll get to you as soon as I can. Um, I wanted to let you know that, um, that Dylan is doing a lot better, and I really appreciate you thinking about her. Um, she's she's been real sweet, and you know she sends her love. Um, Jag is is still being the big dodo, but um, but she's a sweetheart. In fact, she's laying right next to me, and she sends her love too. Um, Kenzie also sends her love. I wanted to let you know that Margaret is about ready to have her baby, so that makes me a grandma again. Um, she's having her little girl probably within a month, so I'll keep you posted on that. Um, I wanted to say I'm really sorry about everything that's happened lately, but, you know, I'm not real surprised, and I know you're not either. Um, but but our fight is still there and strong, and um, we're not giving up. So you hang in there, and I'm sending all of my love. Um, the wildflowers are, are probably listening in, and they'll be they'll be um, giving their shout-outs. But, but hang in there, babe, and I promise as soon as I'm in a better situation with my car, I'll be there to see you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shelly. Uh-huh. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hi, Lydia from McAllen. You're calling into Polensky. Yes, I am. Hi, how are you? You must not have a lot of people today calling in. No, the board is full. <laughs> is it? It is, I got yeah. the line. For, I got the line, like, on the second try. Wow. Well, that's a miracle. <laughs> that's a miracle, right? Well, I have something <laughs> that I want to play for my son uh, that somebody recorded for him. Um... And if, I'm going to dial back later so that I can talk myself but so that other people can have a chance to call in. Okay. Might, might not get okay. in so quick but the next time. Let me play time. this, yeah. my son. It's a recorded message. Okay. Okay? And if you can't hear it, just tell me that you can't hear it. 
We'll do. And here it goes. We'll do. Okay. This is a message from Roxanne Mijo. If you messed up on them pepper. Okay. And there's one more. There's one more. That's it, Mijo. She she sent you that. She sang that for you, giving you thanks for the presents you sent for all that candy. Okay, I'll I'll try dialing back. See if I get the line, give people a chance to call in. Okay, okay? thank thanks, I Lydia. Thank you very much. That was sweet. Thanks a bunch. All right, are we going to? Bye. All right, bye bye. Becky from Brownsville, you calling into Polunsky? Uh, yes, hi, uh, this is Sir John Ramirez. Sir John and Becky, um, pues estoy aquí en la house, um, con los kids, Melissa's at work, um, she's gonna get out like at 3 in the morning. Me dijo que te dijera hi, and que te las estás haciendo bien, y que le escribas pronto. Um, estoy aquí con los niños, uh, Edith's aquí conmigo, uh, it's been cold. We have a lot of, like, como está lloviendo y está windy y todo. Um, cuando fue el Wednesday, Tuesday night, hubo como hielito en el piso. Y se, se me salió Andy y fui atrás de él y me caí de puras rodillas por abajo. So, I'm good. So, te paso ahí, si le para que te salude. Te mandé unas pictures, five pictures today. So, hopefully you get them next week. And uh, no me te quiero decir que te quiero mucho, que te extrañamos y que pronto te vamos a ver. Uh, hi, John. I, say I miss you. I love you. I really want to visit you, but I can't miss a day from, from back, my book up. Did we lose you? No, they're still there. Uh, um, love you. Bye. Here's your mom. Okay, bueno, entonces escríbenos pronto y te queremos mucho. Te mandamos muchos besos y un fuerte abrazo. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Is that it? Anyone else? All right. Thanks, Becky. All right. Let's go to Lupe in Mexico City. Buenos noches, Lupe. Sí, buenas noches. Gracias por el programa. Este, quiero mandar un saludo para Jan Ramírez. Este, hola, hijo. Te mando muchos saludos, mi niño. Este, besos y abrazos. Esperando que te encuentres bien, hijo, y que hayas tenido una buena semana. También te deseo que tengas un buen fin de semana, hijo, y que disfrutes tus personas que van a visitarte, hijo. También te quiero decir que nosotros estamos bien aquí. Ya se me acabó mi semana de vacaciones. Regresé el lunes a trabajar, pero está tranquila porque no hay mucha, mucha gente, pero está muy tranquila. Así que Estoy tranquilo en el trabajo. Y este, también Sergio te manda saludos. Ahorita estábamos como locos los dos. Él me llamaba en el teléfono de la casa y era el celular a ver cuál entraba primero. Pero gracias a Dios que entramos. También Melissa me mandó un mensaje para decirte que te manda saludos, que no nos quiero mirar decirte. Porque está trabajando, entró a las cuatro y va a salir hasta como a las dos o algo por ahí. Hijo. Así que este, te mando muchos saludos. ¿verdad? Así que mi niño, cuídese. Dios me lo bendiga, me lo cuide siempre y este y espero que ya haya recibido su, este, que cheque su libro, ¿sí? Entonces, gracias por el programa y gracias a todos ustedes. Y Dios te bendiga, mi hijo. Gracias. Adiós. Ok, gracias. All right. Gracias. Buenas noches, señorita. Bye. Bye-bye. Let me see. Let me go ahead and go to Linda in Minnesota. You've been on hold for a little bit. Linda in Minnesota, how are you? I'm fine. How are you guys? Good. Go ahead. That's good. I want to say hello to my friends down there in the wind unit, to Papa Rodriguez and Bullet and Willie and Rooster and Miller L and Madden and Bruce, of course, and to all the guys in AA. Uh, I hope you're all staying healthy in this 
horrible flu epi- epidemic. Uh, I haven't gotten it yet, thank goodness. My daughter still has it, and but it, it's really going through so many people up here too. And uh, so I hope that it hasn't gone through everyone down there. And uh, you know, we, we're we're we warmed up today. It got up to forty degrees. We're breaking out the bikinis up here. And uh, I heard that we sent a lot of the cold weather down there, so that was nice of us. I thought. So, uh, but I hope that you're doing well and that you're hanging in there. And uh, you don't know, just uh, just uh, I'm just keeping you in my prayers, and that you're all staying healthy and and that you're all uh, just doing okay, and that you get through every day with the best of your ability, and and just know that God is watching over you and that He's going to keep you going one way or the other. So just keep that in mind and and just. Uh, hang in there. That's uh, the best that you can do. And uh, I'll I'll be talking to you next week, I hope. And hopefully I can write to Bruce and Willie and and anybody else. And uh, I will keep you in my prayers and in my thoughts. And that's the best that I can do at this point. So we'll talk again soon. I hope that you're doing okay. Thanks, you guys. Okay. Thank you so much. All right, okay. everybody in Bye-bye. Texas, in Texas, y'all hold on. I've got to jump to Victoria calling from the UK. Victoria? Hi there, you okay? Hi. And oh. this is a message for Hercules, and I told you that I've been bringing, I'm trying to get through today, and so I hope you're listening. And the kids are all good. They're all back in school, and they're taking time out from Surya. We're getting used to the peace and quiet at the end, so it's quite nice. And then Saray is getting used to having me to herself all day. Um, me and Rachel booked our tickets to Texas, so we'll be flying out in April the 24th. Um, I've never flown anywhere so far away before, so I'm pretty nervous. So by the time it gets closer to time, I'm going to be like, I'm having no hair. Pretty similar to yourself. Um, Kyla went home to keep an eye out for you, and her letter is coming in the mail really sweet. She sat at the dining table for the best part of an hour right into the air. And you'll see for yourself what an effort went into it when you receive it. Um, kids have got loads of ideas for this weekend. They've just gone back to school, so they need to chill out. So I'm going to be taking them to the movies and baking a cake, apparently. So um, Saray says birthday is really soon, and I'm just trying to figure out what to get her because she's got a bit of a passion for dinosaurs at the minute. Um, she's having a dinosaur theme tea party, so I'll definitely have to send you pics of that. And I guess there's something to say I love you, and I'm counting down the days until I see you. I believe it's 93 days away. Um, I'm going to end it there so the people can send a message to their loved ones. But just know I love you so very much. We all do. And I'll see you soon. And you're in my thoughts and prayers. Like God bless, sweetie. And I will speak to you soon. Well, in April, which is that far away. So thank you, and good night. Good night. Thanks, Victoria. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, let's go to Victor- uh, Beretta out of Waco. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Yes, it's for Eric, Wolfgang, and my husband. Um, and they're in a cell unit. I love you, my love. Um, I I wish I could see you tomorrow, but I will be there on Sunday. I'm still going through all this stuff, trying to get it sold so I can get it up. And everything, I love you, Dad. I miss you. And God bless you. And, if, and hopefully, if God's willing, I will make sure I'm there on Sunday. And God bless all of y'all. Thank you. Thank all you so much, Beretta. Thanks. thanks. All right. Let me go to Janie in Houston, calling into Estelle. Hi. Um, this is for Jeremy at the Estelle Unit. Um, I'm just checking in with you. Um, I haven't got an email at all. Um, since your last unit, but I was talking to this lady. Um, her husband's also there at the Estelle unit, doing the same program as you, and he actually called her today and said that the mail room was understaffed, so I guess your mail hasn't been running, I guess, in or out, but uh, I've been writing you and all every day, so hopefully they'll be able to get back on track and all. Um, nothing much new. I mean, just the same old stuff, you know, same old drama and all, but I was able to find Brandon. I found Brandon and everything, and he's not far from the house. He's over there off of Orm. So I know where he's at now. And other than that, um, you're supposed to get a visit this weekend. 
and um, you know, um, just just hanging in there um, and all that. Um, also, I did write you, so, but I don't know if you got it or not, but Tuesday was really bad. The weather was really bad out here, and it was not my fault, but I did get into a little accident. Um, but thank God, nothing happened to my vehicle except a bent license plate. The other two vehicles were pretty bad off, but I'm okay. I was not hurt or anything like that, but um, I did write you about it, though. But, again, it was not my fault. But, um Anyway, I'll let you go and everything. I just want to tell you that I miss you and I love you, and um, I will call you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Have a good night. Uh Uh Let's see. um, Pat and McAllen has been holding for a long time. Pat, go ahead. Polanski. Hey, amigo. I'm calling for a batito. I love you, amigo. Uh, Stephanie was here, but um, she had to leave. She says hi. Carmen también. Um, tomorrow we have Aiden's party and conchas, and then we have a barbecue for Jason at, at Jamie's house. Um, we love you, Miguel. We miss you. Now we're going to play bingo. I, I think I'm going to win again. So, pray for me. <laughs> I love you, Miguel. Hello, Rudy and Juan and uh, Big Lou, Jeff. Guys, you know, keep your heads up. We love you. We're praying for all of you. Um, I love you, puppy. Uh, I might be up there the 27th uh, to see you, mijo. Um, I love you, puppy. Good night. All right. Good night. Thanks, now. Melody out of Paris, Texas. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. How are y'all tonight? Great. (laughs) That's good to hear. Like a million bucks. (laughs) <laughs> well, I tell you. Well, this is a shout out to my husband Josh at the Ferguson unit and his friend Jim Jim, Rob, and Cricket, I believe his name. Anyways, Josh, I just wanted to call you and tell you I love you and hope you're having a good night and getting your belly full. <sighs> your grandbaby is about to drive me absolutely nuts, but it's going to be okay. <laughs> when you come home, she's all yours. You can have every bit of her. <laughs> Uh, I love you, babe. I miss you more than anything in this world. And I know you feel the same way. I'm ready for you to come home. I'm not going to get to come see you till probably next month, but it's just a few weeks away. Anyway, I'm not going to stay on here long because it took me forever to get on here. But I know there's other people that's wanting to say things to their family. With that being said, I'm going to let you guys go and... Thank y'all for letting me do a shout out to my husband Josh. I love you to the moon and back, baby. Always and forever to the end. Thank y'all. Have a blessed night. No, thank you. Good night, Melody. You too, dear. All right. Okay. Let's go to Lydia. She's been holding a little bit. Okay, hi. Hello, Papacito. It's the I hope you heard the message that I played for you from uh, Roxanne. They sent it to me today. They got the box with the all the gifts, and she had a, uh, Roxanne had a blast opening the box and just getting all the stuff that we sent, and she really liked everything, and so did Jamila. It's the, Jason got in last night, Thursday. It was super cool last night. He got in. His boss is retiring. His boss from McAllen is retiring, and they invited him over, um, so I guess he's just going to be here for the weekend and goes back Sunday. So we're going to get together at Janie's tomorrow at around 7 to play uh, Loteria. And, um, yeah, Janie's going to have a barbecue for him tomorrow. And at 1 o'clock, Aiden and uh, Ariel are having a birthday party over at Pizza Hut on North 10th. So we're going to be going to that, too. And then Benny has a baby shower Sunday at 1230, so... I have a bunch of birthday, a bunch of parties for the weekend. Um, so that'll be Benny's baby shower Sunday after church. And um, I sent you a JPEG today at around 4.30, so you probably won't get it till Monday. And um, Winnie's still here with me. She's been taking care of her, uh, healing or uh, putting ointment on her wounds every, like, in the morning. I take care of her in the morning. I 
put ointment on her wounds, and then in the evening I put ointment again before she goes to sleep. She's in bed. Uh, I don't know how much longer she'll be with me. I just don't want to put her to sleep. But she's fine, Mijito. Okay? And I'm fine, and I pray you're fine, Mijo. And, uh, yeah, like Tia Patty said, I think uh, she doesn't know yet if she's going to be going up there yet. But we'll let you know, okay? My saludos to the guys, to Walter, to Rod, Joey, Big Lou, Jeff, Rudy, Thomas, Eric, Artie, Ruben. All you guys know that you're thought of, and you're in our prayers. Okay, mijo, I love you, mijo. I'm sending a warm hug. I know it's been cold up there, too. We're supposed to be in the 80s Sunday, supposedly, okay. and tomorrow's supposed to be a good day. But it was cold here these last few days. Lydia, sorry, yes. I've got to cut into your time. Okay, we... that's fine. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, thanks, goodbye, thanks, Poppy. I love you. Good night. Have Thank a good you, night. Ma'am. All right. Bye. I need to drop her and then go back to yeah, Annabella. Put Lydia okay. back on hold. Uh-huh. I want to go to Annabella. Lydia on hold. Go to Annabella. All right, gotcha. Uh, we got oh, Bella instead fine. of Annabella. Let's do Bella out of North Carolina. You calling into Polunsky? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Sure. Hey, Jedediah. Hey, baby, I love you and miss you. And I'm sure you already know that we're snowed in. Uh, we haven't had internet for most of the past two days, and our direct TV went out. But at least my phone's working, and the generator's working, so I really can't complain because um, there's thousands and thousands of people without power. So we've been really blessed, and tomorrow's supposed to be a little bit warmer, so hopefully some of it will begin to melt. So please don't worry about us because we're good, okay? You take care and stay safe for me, and I always remember I love you, Jedediah. Night, night, and sweet dreams. Thank y'all. Oh, you're welcome. Bye-bye, right. Bella. Thank you. Good night. Bye-bye. Have a good night. All right. All right. Mary Beth calling us out of Seattle into Polenski. Hey, guys. Happy Friday. You too, hon. <clears throat> so my shout-out is for Rodney. Hey, R. Um, it's Friday. Sent you a J-Pay today, so I don't guess you'll get it probably over the weekend, but everything's good here in Seattle. It's been uh, chilly and rainy, but my goodness, I saw the weather for Houston earlier this week, and it looked like a big sheet of ice. So it was. I don't, I don't know if you guys have thawed out yet or not, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the weather is crazy. Uh, Hannah is in Chicago. Uh, she flew out Thursday. She'll be back on Monday. She's having a good time. Uh, first time she's ever been there. I kept trying to convince her that she needed to take warmer clothes, and she kept insisting that she was going to be fine. And her first text off the plane was, it's freezing here. And so <laughs> I, guess she, I guess she figured it out. Cause I don't think she took a pair of socks, so I'm thinking she has cold feet. Um, but it's all good, and I hope you're feeling well and healthy and staying strong. We're all standing with you. We love you. We think about you all the time, and take care of yourself, and uh, that's it for tonight, and thank you guys there for all you do for us. We appreciate it. Oh, certainly. Thank, thank you, you, Mary Beth. Good night Have now. a good weekend. Good okay. night. Bye-bye. All right, now, Annabella in Nacogdoches. Hi, Tower. Yes, ma'am. All right. I, it only took forever to get through. I just want to let um, know that. I'm sorry, but you did hear me <laughs> trying to get to you. Sorry. I did. I did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this is just a shout-out to my husband, Jesse James, at the High Tower. Um, I hope he knows that I love him because i only, you know, been on here for a million years. And... <laughs> That I just want to tell him I love him and that he better keep his head up and he better call me tomorrow since he ain't called me in like forever and forever in a day and all that good stuff. Um, I do work tomorrow 8 to 5, so it has to be after that or I'm off Sunday. So keep your head up and I love you and don't work out too much because I know that's what he's doing. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> that's about it thank you that's for allowing me thing. to do this too you're welcome hey call home guy call home all right exactly yes <laughs> good deal have a good night dear you too 
Yancy, you're calling into Polunsky? Yes. Um, buenas noches, mi amor. Um, eh, espero que me puedas estar escuchando. Te quiero nada más decir que te amo, te extraño. Um, eres todo para mí. Me pones una sonrisa en mi cara. I'm smiling, always thinking of you. Te extraño y que Dios siempre te bendiga a todos momentos. En todo lo que tú hagas, Dios está contigo. Mantén eso siempre presente. Yo sé que lo haces. Y I love you, mi amor. Y te miro pronto. Y aquí uh, Rosa te va a saludar. Noches. Espero que estés bien. Aquí estamos con mi prima. Bendiciones. Cuídate mucho. Bueno, mi amor. Um, buenas noches. Dulces sueños. Uh, tú... Amigo, el de la uh, funeraria, te manda saludos. Uh, ya, ya lo encontró y, um, y está ansioso por verlo. Y uh, todos, todos están ansiosos. Uh, te mando todos los besos. Buenas noches, mi amor. Muchos sueños. Adiós. Thank you. Awesome. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Buenas noches a todos. Okay, good. All righty. Brianne, you're calling from Toronto into Polanski. Hi. Hi. Uh, um, I'm calling for Romero Gonzalez, the Polanski unit. Um, Romero, hello. Uh, I got two letters from you. I received two letters from you this week. Um, and I, I, I hope you've heard from the person you asked me to check in on. I messaged them, and I haven't heard anything. Um, so I will keep, I'll keep trying, but hopefully you've heard from them. And uh, I <laughs> we dropped, I just got home after a six-hour drive. I just dropped my kids off with um, my mom because I am singing uh, Ace of Bass at a wedding tomorrow, which seems completely ridiculous. Like, what year is this, 1993? But, but there you go. And um, it's still freezing cold here, and uh, I... I'm uh, doing a Teze service on Sunday, but uh, I'll be in touch again very soon. I hope I hope that you uh, were able to um, see your family. I hope they were able to come and that uh, Rel and Thea were able to come and see you as well. And uh, I'll, uh, I have, <laughs> I am about to take on the Canadian Postal Service, so I'll let you know how that goes. Okay. Take care. We all love you. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye, Brian. Bye. Bye, David. Oh, by the way, yeah. your, uh, I saw your uh, the video of you on your motorcycle. <laughs> and, uh, pretty sweet. Yeah. Pretty we, sweet. When you're coming down, I'll give you a ride. I will get there as soon as possible, and I'm going to hold you to that. All right. We'll talk to you later. Okay. Have a good night. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Sounds like fun. All right. Let's go to Tiffany in Austin. You've been on for a while. Hi, everybody at KPFC. Hi. Um, for Rodney Reed at Polanski. Hey, Rodney, how are you doing? I hope you are warm enough. It's been really, really cold, and um, I just hope you're warm enough. I'm so bummed that they closed Polanski today, and we didn't get to have our visit, but I will be there next week, and I'm looking forward to seeing you. And Judy is sick, and most likely with the flu. So, um, she will call you, and of course, she loves And so, if you want to, and I talk, if you can yep. tell. Something's wrong with your phone. Can you speak in closer to the mic? Oh, can you not hear me? Yeah, we, we can, can now. now. A while ago, you sounded like Max Headroom. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Is it better? Yep. Much better. I start over? Was any of it heard? We heard... Uh, Up until p the unit being closed yeah. and you missed your visit, right? Okay. So, hey, Rodney, it's Tiffany, and um, I'm so bummed that our visit was... That the, the that Polanski was closed today and we didn't get to have our visit, but I will be there next week. And Judy is sick with the flu, so she's probably not going to call in but she will call you as soon as she's feeling better. And in the meantime, she wants you to know that she loves you and sends you lots of kisses. And I talked to 
your mom this week, and she's doing well. And um, there's not a lot to report. Hope you, that you're warm enough. Um, we all love you. We're on your side. And um, I'll see you next week. All right. Thank you, everybody, at the studio. And um, I, we really appreciate you doing this show. And, Rodney, I'll see you next week. Bye. Awesome. Thanks. Stay warm. Thank you. Kathy, calling into Polanski. Yes. Hi. Yes. Yes. You're on the air. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. It's okay. And, well, this is Kathy, and I'm calling into Polanski, and my shout out is to Randy Strickland. Um, I love you so much, baby. And I wanted to tell you that um, I was on the phone with anybody that would answer the phone, and. I told them, you know, I, I just went through the most unprofessional people this week. It, it was really sad. And the sergeant on the major's office called me back today and assured me that maintenance has ordered the ducks that are not right above y'all and below y'all. And I made sure that everybody I could get on the phone this week knew that your your section is without heat. And he also, the lady that called me back today assured me, too, that you guys were getting extra blankets and coats, um, you know, whatever. Anyway, I just wanted you to know I really did make all the phone calls I could and do everything I could to, to raise, you know, height to the situation that the warden and the admin sat down. They got to go home, and they had feet at their house. That's what I told that major briefly or whatever. Um you know, y'all have heat at your house. You have heat in the office you're sitting in. But my boyfriend is sitting there, and they're cold, and it just doesn't seem fair, you know. But um, also, I just wanted to tell you I'm going to put some money on the phone tomorrow, and um, um, I just love you so much. And I did request a special visit this weekend, but I don't think I'm going to make it. The person that I was going to carpool with that was going to date me, I don't, I don't think they're going to have their part, so I don't know if that's going to work out. But I love you, and I guess we'll talk tomorrow, and I just want you to know that there's nobody else in this life that I would ever want to do this life with. I love you. Thanks to you guys at the station for doing all this and giving us a chance to give shout-outs to our, our family members. Oh, great. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be a part of this, so thanks, Kathy. Thank you. Right. Y'all have a good weekend. You bye bye. Bye bye. Donna from New Jersey, you're calling into Polensky? Yes. Hi. Hey y'all. Uh, hey Polan, it's me. Um just calling to say hi. I'm starting to sound like a broken record because I'm gonna tell you again, there's not really much to tell you and I haven't gotten any mail, so that's on repeat. Um your daughter hasn't gotten any like since last month, which you already know that. Hopefully you're getting the J Pays. If not, then like Dude, I don't know. If you're not getting the JPEGs, then we are, like, really, really messing up. Um, but I sent you some e-com on Wednesday, I guess it was. So keep an eye out for that. I don't know how long you should take. But um, I had been worrying about you because I wasn't getting you anything, and I'd rather send you stuff so that I don't have to worry because I know you got it. So, you know, if you don't want it, accept it for you, then accept it for me because it makes me feel better. But anyway, um, oh, I don't know if you heard or if the USA Today printed it, but a meteorite landed in Michigan, and you know I want to go find some of that meteorite because <laughs> it is, like, worth its weight in gold. The one that landed in the check, like, way back whenever it was. I want to do my shout-out before uh, the government shuts down. Something. I don't know. Most right, it's, it's what it's sold on as the market. <laughs> it's, like, so expensive. And, like, people hold it, and they say it buzzes, and it, it like, makes you sick or it makes you... It heats up your hand. Like, I don't know. It's from someplace else. You know what I'm saying? So it does other things. But I have a friend in Michigan, and she said her and her mom are going to go try and find some of that media, right? <laughs> and if you knew my friend, that would make you crack up laughing because she's just the craziest person I've ever met. Um, but anyway, um, I love you, and I hope you're doing well. And I really hope I get a letter soon. I haven't gotten one since the one you wrote on January 1st. So, um you know, if something's going on, send word out to somebody or whatever. I think um, you know who's going to be there tomorrow. Hey, you should be in the studio listening to me right now. 
So, <laughs> um, Are your ears uh, burning? You know, just send a kite out if something's going on, all right? But I'm pretty sure you're fine. It's just that you're slow and don't want to do their job and have a million excuses. But I'll go now. I love you, and I will talk to you next week. Bye. Bye, y'all. Bye, Bye Donna. Donna. Send a piece of that rock, okay? Uh, I'm trying to find some. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> bye. All right. Bye-bye. Let's see here. Who have we got? Nancy, you calling into Polensky? Thank you. Uh, hello, Daniel. This is Mama. And I love you with all my heart. I've been sitting here tonight while waiting to give you this shout-out, drinking a good cup of coffee. The weather <laughs> here is above freezing now. Um, I, I drove out to the mailbox last Thursday to mail you a letter, and the flag was frozen through the mailbox. <laughs> and I finally pulled and tugged and got the flag up, and they did come and get my letter. But it's been awful, awful cold, and I, I know everybody has been around, you know, yeah. around this part. Um, anyway, uh, I sent you some pictures Thursday. No, that was Friday. I sent you some pictures Friday, and then uh, I talked to Sherry today, and she, as always, wants me to tell you she loves you with all of her heart. And uh, the first part of next week, she's going to be sending you something too. Uh, I think, I think, like like I've been listening to people say, uh, that Kalinsky has been a lot. It's just been closed down because there wasn't much coming or going at all. So anyway, in one day next week, one day next week, oh, I'm going to pick a day and go spend just one night. And come back the next with Sherry, and uh, everybody's doing okay, and and I hope and pray that you're staying warm, and just keep me in your prayers, Daniel, and you're in my prayers, and I'll be talking to you uh, next time. And thank y'all, everybody on KPFT, for making this shout out possible, awesome. and y'all have a good weekend. Thank right. you, thanks, you Miss too, Nancy. Nancy. Thank you, and bye bye. And now in the studio, we have Mystery Mike Lewis. Hello, everybody. I'd like to do this shout-out before the government shuts down tonight. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, here's some shout-outs to uh, Yovan at Spring Branch, the guys at Texas, Guy Alexander, Jamie Cuppet, uh, Dennis Hope, Stephen Russell. Ca- uh, Carlo Rivera- Riviera wants me to do a shout-out to Alex Molina at the Telford Unit. A shout-out to Philip in Dallas, K Money in Houston, Philip Perez in Houston, Bonton Mickey in Houston, Ty Burns. Tasha wants me to do a shout out to Rito Estrada and Payday. Shout out to Michael Marino, Manuel Marino at the Estelle Unit and Eastham Unit. Shout out to Michelle Bateman, DJ Doc, DJ Matt, DJ Oz, DJ Thomas. Special shout out to Frank Klepper at the Gore Unit. Haas, Danger, Lucky, Jive and Jimmy. Shout out to uh, Bill R. Sims at the uh, Win Unit. Uh, let's see, F. Bernard at the Darrington Unit, Howard S. Pruitt, Sr. at the Polunsky Unit, Jose Herrera, Michael S. Garcia at the Ferguson Unit, Juan F. Carlos Esparza at the Stringfellow Unit. Here's some more shout-outs to Christopher Dye at the uh, Darrington Unit, Bill R. Sims at the Wynn Unit, Clarence Lee Bowman, a special shout-out, Thomas uh, Ramirez at the Polunsky Unit, John R. Green at the uh, Terrell Unit, Robert L. Allen at the Darrington Unit, Edward Darrell Harmon at the Polunsky Unit, Abel R. Acheo at the Polunsky Unit, Mark Holloway at the Luther Unit, Wayman Spriggs at the Polunsky Unit, Robert Satillo at the Wynn Unit, and K.D. Kebble at the Polunsky Unit. You can continue to write me, uh, Mysterious Mike Lewis, to the uh, Historic Prison Show, KPFT, 419 Lovett Boulevard, Houston, Texas, 77006. Now back to the host on the Prison Show. Awesome. Thanks, Mystery Mike. All right. How about Miss Linda? You got some shout-outs tonight? I sure do. Awesome. Okay, guys, I've had some great visits this week. Um, Spent a lot of time with Anthony Shore. I'm really going to miss him. I'm sorry that he had to go last night, but um, he was at peace. So I guess he's free now, and, uh, and he'll be happy. Juan Castillo, Ramiro Gonzalez, Jesse Hill. Uh, Jesse, you're going to uh, 
be getting a letter in the mail, or you, you, may, you probably already got it. It went out last week. Yeah, yeah. so the mail's been really slow. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll be at the unit tomorrow, so I'll see you. Vincent Baker, Wendy on Sanders, Roland Mays, Brian Davis, Rick Rhodes, David Wood, Stephen Long, Will Spear. Will, I'm going to see you at 5.30 tomorrow night. Uh, John Ramirez, Robert Frada, Jaime Cole, John Rubio. David's going to see you at 5.30 tomorrow night. Billy Wardlow, Eugene Broxton, Danny Bible, Fabian Hernandez, Abel Ochoa, Patrick Murphy, Fidencio Valdez, Milton Gobert, Dennis Hope, Stephen Russell, and Douglas Armstrong, uh, Blaine Milam, Tedrick Batiste, Juan Ramirez, and Richard Tabler. There's, I have a shout out for Ram, the Ramsey unit, Colton Weir. Uh, your wife will see you Sunday. She's coming into my house tomorrow, but she'll be there to see you on Sunday. Darrington unit, Ant- Antonio De La Paz Jr., and Jeff Andrizak. LeBlanc unit, Salvador Urate, and Jason Gallegos, Samuel Solomon. Huntsville unit, Larry Barker. Larry, I got your sweet letter today, and I, I'm going to try to write you back in the morning. The wind unit guy, Alexander, my little brother. Sorry I missed your call when you called this week, but David said you all had a real good conversation. The Luther unit, Adam Wilkerson, Jeffrey Wallace, and Jimmy Carrington. That's all, guys. I'll be, be hanging around next week, so talk to you all later. Thanks so much, Miss Linda. Yeah. You're an inspiration. <laughs> I, I love visiting. Awesome. Well, it looks what like we're we back at the top of the top of the list. All right, Diana. Hey, Miss Diana, how are you? Hi, I'm okay. How are y'all? We're good. Hadn't heard yeah, you in a day good. or two. Staying warm. Oh yeah. Yeah, me too. Very exhausted tonight. Um, glad I was able to get up and and call in. It's been a long week. Um, sending a shout out to my son Johnny at the Polanski unit. Hi, Michal. I didn't hear it from you today, but I'm glad we did talk on yesterday. And I um, wanted to let you know that I called about uh, the e-com and all e-com orders. And I know probably somebody already announced this, but all the e-com orders, um, everything was halted um, if it was done last week. Um, and all deposits didn't go into today as well. So... Um, yeah, because they were closed for MLK, and then they were closed for um, the two days of the storm, and so everything was deposited, and e-com orders were sent out or being prepared today. Okay, so I just wanted to call in to let you know. I'm sorry, I sound a little bit tired. I fell asleep, but I woke up and trying to be able to call in. And um, I, I love you, Mio. I love you so much. And y'all guys, y'all stay warm. They won in there, not no. I read in the paper about the about the you know, the conditions and it being cold. And I just know that we're praying for you. We're praying for all of you, and that that we care. And um, you know, I won't be able to be there this weekend, but I, I will and will be there next weekend. Okay, I'm glad I got to see you last week. You okay, all have a good night, and I hope you have a safe trip home from the show. Thank you all for everything that you are doing. And I love you, Mijo. I hope that you can call me tomorrow. Okay. God bless you. All, all right. All right. Bye-bye, Ms. Diana. Thanks, Diana. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. We do care. That's why we're here. Clarence calling into Polensky. How y'all doing tonight? Great. How are you? Yes. I've been sick as a dog for the last two and a half weeks. Oh, wow. It's flu. Oh, wow. Not to mention this chemo that I'm taking. Oh, yikes. Well, hang in there, Clarence. Hang in there. I need to apologize right here. I called his number, I think, about three times by mistake. <laughs> he thinks you have a crush <laughs> on him, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, Hank, Hank, how you been doing? Hank's on oh. furlough. He's not here. Oh, he is? Yeah, this is David. David. All right, David. Still mysterious, Mike. He's still hollering out to me, but I'm at home. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. He, he, we'll let it. Mike. Did you hear that? He's home now. You still hollering out to him, and he's already home. He's giving you the thumbs up. <laughs> All right. Let me holler at my boys on that Polanski unit, sir. You go right on ahead. Oh, Wardell King, Clarence Brown, or Raymond Spriggs, or Johnny Santon Bond, Corey, Polo, you got White. 
I'm thinking about you, brothers, man. Hope your brothers doing well, man. I hear them food got y'all locked down again, but y'all just hang tough, brother. Gonna be all right after a while. I'm, I'm still fighting it out out here, man. I'm taking chemo treatments, man. To look at it, takes my appetite away. I done lost about 15 pounds, mm. but I'm, I'm gonna fight as long as I can. Good Lord's will. Y'all take care. Know that I'm thinking about y'all, man. Y'all, y'all take care of each other now, man. And for so sister girl calling about trying to make maintenance do some some Vincent thing, she can forget that. Cause they gonna lie to us left and right. Y'all take care, and stay in touch, man. Oh King, got me a line or two. Let me know how everybody's doing. I know Brown ain't gonna do it cause he kind of mad at me. But y'all, got me a line. Let me know how y'all doing, man. All right, uh, y'all take care, David. All right, Clarence, you take care, man. Everybody my love, man. I'm doing the best I can, man. You keep that chin up, all right? Hang uh, in I got there. you, man. All right, all brother. Right. We'll talk to you I'll next week. All right. all right. Good night. Judy, hi. You calling into Polanski? I am. Good evening. I'm calling to shout out to Rodney Reed. They are. It's me. I made it through. Um, been not feeling good at all today. I wasn't sure I was going to be able to get through don't have anything written, so I'm going off the cuff. I did get your card and relayed your message to all the wildflowers. I got the message from Bryce. Um, and just let Tiffany know when she's there next week about Ecom. Um, 15 days I'm counting. I'm hanging in there. Everybody's pretty much here. I've been quarantined to my room. I uh, don't want to get anybody off sick. So it's not been... A very fun vacation time. So. But all is good. I was able to get through, and that's all that matters. You know, I love you. I miss you. Can't wait to see you. Um, stay strong. Keep the faith. Continue to hope and dream. Our dreams are alive and well. 3560 I've been sending j -Pace. I did get the message that they are way behind. Um, so you, hopefully they'll be able to catch up. Mm -hmm. I love you. Sweet dreams. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good night, guys. Thank you so much. All right. Good night. Thanks, Good Judy. Night. All right, Cheyenne, you calling into Polinsky? Yes, ma'am. Hello. Hi. Go so ahead. I'm calling in for Romero. Um, I haven't received any letters from you since the last one I talked about. So quite a few weeks now, but I know that um, mail's been running a little slow. And with Texas being shut down on Tuesday, every I haven't even been getting mail until like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Usually I get by like 11. So hopefully I get something soon. Um, nothing new, actually. Um, just kind of been sick laying around, you know. Um, weather's got me down. The dogs have been crazy. Thor is actually in my face right now because he thinks I'm on the phone with Mateo, so he wants to talk. So it's pretty funny. But, um... So hopefully I get a letter from you soon because I have some stuff I want to talk to you about. Um, but that's about it for now. I hope you have a great night, and I hope to hear from you guys soon. So thank you, guys, and I hope you all have a great night. Okay. Thanks. You too, Cheyenne. Good night. Thank you. Hi, this is Di. I hope this finds you all doing well and feeling fine. I have a few shout-outs tonight. And the first is for Gabriel at Polensky. I'm so sorry I didn't get to um, visit with you this week. Linda had other obligations, as you may have heard. I have a shout-out for Virginia and Big Will at Polensky. Uh, I'll get back on my visitation schedule very soon, hopefully. Uh, I have a shout-out for Stephen Sandbloom and at Darrington and Matthew Authorman at Ramsey too. I just got letters out to both of you. Um, you should be receiving them this week. And as always, peace and love to all who hear this as well as all who don't. Thank you. Hey, this is the prison show. Are you there? Uh, yes. You want to go ahead and make a shout out? Uh, yes. Yes, please. Go ahead. Uh, this is uh, Patrick from uh, Nacogdoches, and uh, it's going out to the Lockhart unit. 
Hey, Patrick. Good to hear hey. you, Patrick. Howdy. Go ahead. It's your dime. Make your shout out. Oh. Oh. Uh. Oh. Oh. Yes. Uh. Um. Uh, my. Uh, my lady uh, Amber uh, just found out this morning that uh, she was getting transferred to the Lockhart unit. Uh, I don't know if uh, she's there yet, uh, or if she has her property with her. Uh, but uh, in case uh, she does and she hears this, I uh, just want to tell her uh, I love her. And uh, I also wanted to send a shout-out to my friend uh, Dallas Christian, who's at the Eastham unit. Uh, and I uh, hope you're doing well. And I uh, also wanted to uh, pass along my best wishes to the staff at the prison show uh once again, uh, I think uh, you people do a great job. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. We appreciate you. No, no problem. Y'all have a nice night. You too, brother. Uh, hey, this is the prison show. Are you still there? Yes. Go ahead and make a shout out. Uh, I've been out of prison eight years. I did 21 years. And my name is Jam Jaramillo. And I was at East Ham for many, many, many years. And I don't forgot a lot of the guys' names, but I got a good friend of mine, Clarence White. I wish him to, to get strong because I know he's ill. And just know that he's still in my prayers. Since I've been out of prison, my life has been better. I became a Christian. I go to church. Awesome. I have a great job. And it's happening out here. There's life out here, and all you guys are in there, all my brothers in there, make the right choices because it's beautiful out here. And I made the right choice because I chose to stay out of prison. And again, I just wish all you brothers get all together and make parole and make a great life out here. And I appreciate this, Ain't you no. guys there at the radio station, for allowing me to say this to my friends. No, we appreciate you, Jim, because you hit the nail on the head, man. It's happening out here. Yeah, It's I, happening out here. I've got about 15 choices. flat underneath my belt. <laughs> and the last time I got out, I, you know, I, I, I'm not going to get religious or nothing, but I prayed to God. It's like, man, what did I do? How come every time I get out, I fall back into them old habits and I do the same old crazy things? End up right back in that place. But yet I can go in that hole out there in the, behind the wire, and I can be successful, if you want to call it that. I kept a job. I never did get rolled. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was doing all the right things in there. I go to chapel and be a volunteer. Uh -huh. Then I come out here, and I get get to drinking and the drugging and the doing all the crazy <laughs> things and go right back up in there. So I thought... I have not. I have not touched one drop of alcohol. I have not looked at no drugs because... I'm an ex-alcoholic. Right. I'm an ex-drug addict. That's awesome. I got locked up in 89, and I got out in 2010. Oh, it's happening. Jesus awesome. being good to me. And awesome. my brother's up there in that prison. Listen, listen to what I went through. I went through hell, and you know what, you, what I'm talking about. Yes, guys. sir. I yeah. stopped being a follower. I am a leader, and I want all my brothers, I wish they were all out, because it's happening out here. And here's the funny thing. I can adjust my own water in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. With yeah. ones like you that set examples for others. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And also, I can change my own TV remote. Yeah. No, fights, no fights. No <laughs> fights, huh? Yeah. Thank yeah. you, guys. All right, Jim. You call back, this. okay? And call y'all for, for the last eight years. Well, I'm gonna call have to Eight years out. Keep, keep, yeah. calling. keep calling. Keep calling us. us. We'll be here for you. Okay. Thank you. And I'll call again, hopefully, if y'all allow me to call. Call in. Yeah, We're call here. in. <laughs> you can come visit us, too, if you want. Well, yep. I'm up here in East Texas, and it's beautiful out here. The piney. Yeah. Piney. <laughs> I, I rode up to Tyler I'm Christmas up. Eve. I was up in Tyler. Oh, okay. I'm about 30 miles from me. Yeah. I'm in, I'm in Gilmer. All right. I know where you're at. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm from San Antonio, but it's happening out here. Yeah, it sure beautiful. is. It's beautiful out here. 
Thank right. you so much for sharing that and for inspiring those your brothers on the inside, okay? All right, Jim. Yeah. You keep All making right. them I next just, right decisions, brother. It just hurts me that I forgot their names, but there's another one I haven't forgot. John Lawrence. That's my that's my brother who adopted me, him and his family, and that's why I'm out here. I want him to hurry up and come out because he got a set off and he's going to come up again this year, and we're praying for him to come out. Because of John Lawrence, I have a new life. Awesome. That's awesome. Cool. All right, Jim. Have a good night, brother. Thank you. God bless All John. Right. Have a blessed weekend. Okay. You All too, right. brother. Those success stories is what makes the prison show yeah. all worthwhile, doesn't it? Awesome. Yep. I hope somebody picks up six. <clears throat> there we go. Oh, that's all the callers tonight. Um, wow, time flew. Time flies by when you're having fun. Wow. You know, January 31st, I'll have 11 years sober. I'm going to go awesome. get my chip. Awesome. For those of y'all that are around here in Houston, mm -hmm. I'll be down at that Spring Ranch Memorial Club. On a, I'll drink to that. I'll be on the 31st on a Wednesday <laughs> night. And uh, y'all come down and wish me a happy birthday. Uh, Dee Dee and I have been going regular since we've been together. Holly used to come with me. I don't know where Holly is. I tried reaching out to Holly. Holly, if you're listening... Birthday's coming up Wednesday night, 31st, so come on down there and wish me a happy birthday. Well, I'll buy you a Coke. Buy me a Coke. I'll buy you a Coke. <laughs> <laughs> Coke or root beer. I've been drinking them root beers. Baby mama thought she caught me slipping, and she caught a picture of me down at last concert cafe with a, 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 a root beer. Bottle. I had in a, a bottle. St. Arnold's root beer in a bottle. Looks just like a beer. Uh -huh. <laughs> First time I ordered one, they brought me that bottle, and my old heart went pitter-patter, and I had to stop and read the bottle just to make sure. Uh -huh. And sure enough, it's a root beer. You know, you can get out on a dance floor and put it in your back pocket and feel just like you was at home. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's kind of funny because Jam hit the nail on the head, man. And I know Jack's going through the same things. And and whenever I first got out, it just felt funny to be making all the right decisions and doing the right things. And sometimes I wouldn't have enough money in my pocket. I didn't know where any money was coming from. And uh, I've, I've paid all my child support since I've been See. out. I've done everything I'm supposed See. to be doing. I got a good job, got vehicles. Uh, Every day you're making decisions to do the right thing, so and you'll, you're will you constantly. As long as you're doing that, that, it's going to yeah. stay out. And you know, Ray Hill was one of the best examples I ever had. Awesome. Ray's been out all these years. He's been sober too. So. Mm -hmm. And Dave and Jack have good women who take care of them. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Absolutely. Got, got yes. My sweetie Dee Dee back in my life. So. That's right. <laughs> That's it. The best yeah. parole officers you could ever have, right? Yeah. <laughs> good wife at your side. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Well, You're going to follow the rules. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, we're about running out of time. we got about 30 seconds or so left, but we wanted to make sure that you guys know that Dean Becker's going to be up for Cultural Baggage. What other show you got tonight, Mike? Uh, alternative Radio, right after Cultural Baggage at so midnight. Y'all just stay tuned. Mm -hmm. Keep your dial right where it's at. Keep the volume up. Maybe go get you some coffee or something. Stay up a little bit. Miss Tanika and Miss Linda, I really appreciate you guys coming and sitting with me tonight. Having fun. I, I'm glad to be here. And yeah, we'll see you too. next Friday. We'll be here next Friday. <laughs> yep. We'll see you next right. Friday. Good night. Go ahead, Mike. Protect democracy in these crucial times.